Hey guys, welcome back to another Psycraft episode. Today we want to come back to the cactus farm topic. So we didn't change our mind. The plan is still to build a machine that's going to build a gigantic cactus farm in the void perimeter. So it was, the plan was to build it from bedrock to sky limit, almost 400 blocks high, and to complete random tick range. We started on this, but quickly changed our mind. And yeah, after thinking about it, came to the conclusion, yeah, it's probably a lot less effort to just build a machine that does it for us. Hundreds of hours of work will be saved this way. But it's gonna take some time until this is finished. Probably gonna take a couple weeks or months until yeah, the machine is actually finished in creative. And then we need to test run it and all of that. And then it needs to be built in survival. And then we need to run it. It's gonna take probably an, another year until yeah, we're yeah, actually at a point where the Cactus farm is maybe finished. It's probably even gonna take two years. So that's actually a long time and we're playing the game right now. It would really be convenient to have an XP farm already um, for some tool repairs and large scale enchanting. So of course you could use a guardian or gold farm for that. But the best thing in my opinion is really the XP bank. So yeah, sometimes you need to for example, if you want to make a lot of diamond boots, there are like six enchantments you need to put on. If you want um, swords as well, then it's even seven. can cost you up to like 30 levels to combine all of that in the last step. This even with a fast mob-based XP farm will take a while. But with the furnace array, it's basically you can store 10,000 XP in a furnace, take it out. It takes less than a second to pick, pick it all up and then yeah, you can do pretty much everything with it. So for yeah, large scale stuff, for XP bank furnace is, is best. And the only real option is also cactus. Uh, it used to be that you didn't get one XP per cactus smelted, but it's now the case. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if it's really intended. I don't think even it's OP. But yeah, now we get one XP per cactus smelted. The next, next best thing I think would be like when it comes to renewable items, of course, diamond or uh, ancient breeze is not an option. When it comes to renewable items would be fish. Or potatoes, you get 0 0.35 XP for that, but it's kind of hard to get hundred thousands of those items per hour. And then the next best thing would be cobblestone, you get 0 0.1 XP per cobblestone, so only a tenth of what you get per cactus. So, yeah, the only real option is really the, the cactus, and yeah, it has to be a cactus farm. Um, so the plan is not to make a smaller cactus farm because like the huge one which is going to provide us two to three million cactus power we're going to have actually issues to build such a large furnace already can deal with all of that would require something like seven thousand furnaces uh, that's just insane that's going to probably cause more lag um, than we can handle even so let's go step smaller something feasible where we could even add a bamboo farm on top to provide fuel um, so if we go for like a 5 or 10% as large cactus farm, yeah, uh, so basically a small starter farm, well, in relation to the big one, of course it's going to be a huge project, then I think we're better off for now, and then later we can <laughs> have the, the big cactus farm just because. And let's see how much XP we can even get out of that uh, without completely lagging the game. Alright, so the plan would be to downscale the farm. Maybe make it 5 or 10% as large, it would be half a million, 1 million blocks to place, which is still a lot of effort, but this is something that is, should be doable within a couple of weeks. Alright, so I made the new cactus farm, that's gonna be the early game version, because only jokingly, um, but, well, we played season 1 for almost 7 years, now it's month 2 of season 2. Still early game, right? Yeah, of course, it's a joke, but <laughs> here it is. Um, so it's about 300,000 cacti per hour. So I also made it square. This is the biggest possible square within the random tick range, 192 by 192. Reason is it's just easier to build if the, the pattern doesn't break up like with the big cactus farm. You can also see maybe direct size comparison. Looks really small compared to the big one that is looming in the background, but well, it's still a very large farm. Okay, um, so basically just um, took the center part of this farm and yeah, pasted it here. There wasn't much that I had to adjust, just make new walls and so on. Wasn't much effort actually. All right, then we can start building this in survival. All right, so here we are in survival and this is the current progress of the cactus farm. So it's already pretty advanced. We've been working on this for a bit over a week. 
I've been streaming for like 15 hours on it. Um, Fox, 20 hours. Tap was working for 10 hours. Iceberg at night, probably another 10 or 15 hours. So a lot of hours went into this already. In case you don't believe us, you can also check the Twitch VODs. <laughs> so this was not off camera work actually. Um, so the location this was built in is a desert biome, but not because like cactus grows faster there or anything like that. Um, it's just because I was searching for a flat area. So I actually wanted to build this like flat on the surface, but later we decided to build it up in the sky. Um, made this decision during Fox's stream. I don't even remember why we made the decision. Because now we don't have to dig at all. Also this village will be spared. Um, yeah, we're gonna add legs to this later, okay. But yeah, initially this was chosen because it's just a super flat area. As you can see, hardly any hills or elevation. We just need to dig a couple layers of sand and it would have been flat on the surface. All right, um, so I'm not making really a time lapse of us building the whole thing because you know, it's kind of hard. It would be like at least 80 hours of footage and it's kind of hard to record everything because then iceberg is working at night i would need to always have a bot on um and the timeless also wouldn't be that interesting to be honest because well what we did so far was placing uh, the stone slab layers first one at a time we also built at the same time the green glass wall around it and then we already had, basically had the whole structure and then it was just us whizzing through the layers back and forth and first placing all of the uh, birch fences against the underside of the slabs and then as a next step we place down all of the sand just whizzing through the layers it would even be hard to show this on a time lapse nicely so probably best um yeah if, if i just make little progress updates about this time lapse wouldn't even look that great also similar to when working on the big cactus farm there will be built by the machine later i brought a horse to speed up the block placing process so this horse can reach a speed of 13.6 um, meters per second without a potion. If we put a swiftness one potion on it for long duration, of course, then we can get it up to 16.3 meters per second. So additionally, I was of course using tweak room mod to help with placing like uh, a block every second block. So there's this feature called placement grid. Um, there we have it, placement grid. So you need to enable this. And also the fast block placement and in generic you can set the, the step size. Um, so we have a block grid size of 2. So we place every second block while just holding down right mouse button. Yeah, this way we can speed up the process. So basically just running through, placing all the fences next to me. And then I use the diagonal um, yeah, horse riding. So Roughly like this to place all of the sand at the bottom. So it's similar to a player like running at a 45 degree angle. You can be a bit quicker than just running straight. As you can see 7.8 when I'm running straight and a bit over 8 meters per second um, when running diagonally. Now if the horse if you hold down you know, A and W or W and D um, it wouldn't really work if you're angled at 45 degrees because the horse runs slower sideways than it runs forward. So you gotta align yourself in a 26.6 degree angle and then you can also increase the speed of the horse a little bit. Not much, it's usually only about 0 0.2 meters per second, similar to increasing the, yeah, the running speed as a player. Um, but yeah still helps a little bit. Also here I actually had to align myself sideways a little bit of the horse and run straight uh, because obviously when running straight I couldn't really place the sand under me nicely. Okay so this was how we sped up the, the placing process. Now it's actually the next step that needs to be done. So do I still have the schematic loaded? No. Gotta download it again for some reason always from Sync Medica. So the next step uh, would have been actually to place all of the nether brick fence. Uh, so we were placing all of the slab layers without any gaps in between, but it's actually supposed to be yeah, the gaps here with the nether brick fence, which has the function that well, sometimes um, a cactus item would yeah, of course pop when it uh, breaks and then has a trajectory and fall to the side. 
So if there's another brick fence here in between, then some of those items will be caught that would otherwise like coll uh, collide with the next cactus and get lost. So this increases the efficiency slightly. Um, but of course, it's actually a lot of effort to place all of the nether brick fences, and they're not really necessary. Uh, if we go to the next layer, for example, because the water stops here anyway. Um, so we could also just leave out the nether brick fence entirely and build the farm without it. Um, this is something I would actually prefer, because this would also help with the next step. Um, so if you would place all of the nether brick fences now here in between, it will be quite tricky to place all of the cactus. Um, so that's something, yeah, that will take a lot of time actually. So it took us about roughly 12 to 13 hours to place all of the sand. Um, if you could now just yeah, place the sand immediately now with the horse again, we could save a lot of time. But once the nether brick fences are in the way, this is basically impossible to do with the horse. It's also quite interesting that running over the sand here also slows down the horse a little bit. So if I don't have any blocks to run over, yeah, with the speed 1 potion, I can reach 16.3. But running over the sand, only 12 meters per second. Would still be, be preferable to have it. Yeah, the angle can go to 13.7 meters per second. Um, yeah, it would still be preferable to have the horse, but of course the nether brick fences are in the way. Why don't we place the cactus now and the nether brick fences later? Well, all of the cactus um, yeah, growing right now would all end up on the floor, right? And then all of the items would lag the game. Um, so unless they're really flushed into the nether portals as quickly as possible, it's a really bad idea to have all the cactus growing right now. So this would maybe work with one layer, maybe two layers, but after that, that it would already get too laggy. Um, so the next step needs to be poking all the holes here and uh, also placing down the water. Um, the water also basically needs to be yeah, placed where we have holes. There we just place the, ne uh, the, the birch fence gates. So the Items can fall through, and on top of the fence gate, you would have water spreading to the side. Okay, so this needs to be done now, and then we can place the cactus. Um, of course, it would be super beneficial to place the nether brick fence um, after poking the holes. So we would just go up to the farm, dig our way through, and then jump back up, placing all of the nether brick fence. Um, yeah, but then we couldn't place the cactus with the horse afterwards. But if you would just poke the holes and completely leave out the nether brick fence, you could still, even if there's water, just ride with the horse over the cactus probably, and yeah, maybe place the cactus sideways. Running with the horse also has the advantage that we wouldn't fall down all the time here in between the blocks and not get flushed by water. So we're definitely preferable to use the horse somehow, even if it's just sideways walking. Um, so, yeah, my question is now, should we place the nether brick fences or not? Hmm, so I guess we just go in the creative world real quick and test the whole farm without the nether brick fences again, see how this would affect the rates and see if it would get laggier. Okay, so we're back at the cactus farm in creative. I did another test to see how much we're now getting per hour. Exactly, it's 296,700. And also did a tick warp to have an estimate how laggy the farm is, 6.17 milliseconds per tick. Okay, now we can actually do the test and see what happens if we remove all the nether brick fences. So I'm just going to do a fill command and then we do the same roughly one hour test and yeah, see how this will affect lag and the production rate of the farm. Okay, let's go all the way down here. Fill air, replace nether brick fence. Oh, we need a higher fill limit. Good that we have carpet mod. And there we go. Actually, the limit needs to be higher than a million, too. <laughs> okay. Yep. Now we got the same farm, just without the nether brick fences. This will be definitely a lot less work. So I did another test, and as expected, the amount of items we're getting went down to 289,000 items per hour. So that's about yeah, 7,000 items less, 
not really significant. What's that? Two and a half percent less. So this is actually nothing to worry about. Also surprisingly, actually for me, the lag also went down. Not significantly though. From 6.17 MSPT to 5.93 MSPT. So this could actually just be caused because we have few items. More of the cactus gets destroyed. Um, or it could also just be within the, the margin of error. So at least the lag didn't go up. This would have been something to worry about. Yeah. I'd say let's pull it without another brick, to be honest. All right, time for another progress update. I worked on this for another day. Tap is actually working on it right now. So we decided to indeed leave out the nether brick fences and just poke holes. And we did this for the top half of the farm already. So all the layers got holes in it. And we already placed water on the three top layers. And I have to be honest, yeah, running around poking the holes into the glass at the bottom or the slabs at the top. This was so far the worst part of building this farm. Running around with the horse, placing the other blocks was kind of nice. Was kind of nice or something else with the horse. But this is, as you can probably understand, not too much fun as we basically just ran through, poked the hole there, did the whole two blocks to the right and the left, and went through this <laughs> layer or lane by lane. And then turned around, did the next three, and so on. Oof. Took me about one hour to finish one of those layers. Yesterday I did four of those, so about four hours of poking holes. Um, Imagine if you would have built actually the, the huge farm by hand. So good decision. This one is still feasible without going insane, but yeah, it's rough. <laughs> Glad it's actually almost done basically. So we also finished um, yeah, poking holes on one of the bottom layers and then I think two more are, are like half finished. So like five layers to go, five more hours of poking holes. We also got the water in now at the top. I'm uh, gonna change the strategy a bit. So I wanna yeah, then Fill in the rest of the water uh, column by column. So basically place ice, break it, then open the fence gate, drop down on the next fence gate that is also closed. Then place ice, break it, drop down and so on and do it column by column. And then maybe throw ender pearls or fly back up again um, and do the next one. So per chunk, we actually only have two water sources. So I need to do this only like 400 times. Um, and then of course the same again for the bottom half. All right, uh, then there's actually the next issue. So we got all the materials pretty much for this, but one thing is missing, cactus. Um, we need a cactus farm to build a cactus farm. So we actually made another schematic. This time it was only one chunk. So this is 144 chunks, and we basically took only a single chunk version with about the same height, I think it was also 13 layers or so, that produces roughly 1700 or 2000 cactus per hour that we can run on the side. So I decided to build it next to the mud farm district because that's loaded anyway and then the cactus farm can also run. So I got a time lapse of Freestyle Fox and Tuno and myself building it.
It's kind of cute, isn't it? <laughs> now we really get used to the scale of the other cactus farms. This yeah, quite large tower of a cactus farm isn't even that crazy anymore. It's like the 0.1% version of the max size cactus farm. But it still produces yeah, roughly 2000 cacti per hour. It is running overnight and several chests are filled. Didn't really bother putting in a Schalke box filler. Because I'm the Schalke box filler. I'm just gonna do it myself. Alright, now I can bring this over to the well, 10% form. Huge progress update. It's actually several weeks later after I started this episode. The cactus farm is finished. Over 100 man hours of work went into this. And I'm gonna fly around a bit to give you a scale of this thing. I also think Iceberg recently started putting in all the uh, nether brick fence replacements. I haven't even seen that. <laughs> I think Iceberg probably did that, yeah. I'm gonna fly around a bit to give you the scale of this thing. 300,000 cacti per hour, approximately. Okay, so this is basically just part one of the project. So in order to get yeah, a huge furnace array going, we also need fuel. So the plan is now to build a huge bamboo farm on top that is able to supply all the furnaces and then have the furnace array system in the nether. That's gonna be yeah, content for one of the upcoming episodes. Right, so hope you enjoyed this. Thanks guys for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.